I've always been fascinated with submarines, how they work, what life is like, and how they communicate. When I was a kid, we visited the Museum of Science and Industry that houses the captured German submarine U-505, which was one of the first moments that sparked my interest. Besides that, I've been consuming plenty of other submarine-related media, like movies U-571 and The Hunt for Red October, and books like Steelboat, Iron Hearts, and Codename Nemo. I've said before that I find submarines so cool but could never live on one. Limited sunlight in the wintertime is hard enough, let alone none. It led to the thought, what does it actually take to live on a submarine? Consequently, this film is less about what I know and more about what I don't. I'm setting out to learn, not from textbooks or diagrams, but people who have lived this life. Over the next few months, I'll talk to people who have done it, learn what I can, and see if any part of me could handle a life submerged. The first order of business is to brief you on the basics. A submarine doesn't sink because of ballast tanks. In order to dive, water fills these tanks, making it denser than the surrounding water. To maneuver through the water, driving planes, or hydroplanes, adjust angles, or pitch, when diving or surfacing. Most of my knowledge rests in World War II era subs, which are vastly different from present day nuclear submarines. It's easiest to tell them apart by the size difference. While World War II subs are pretty tight with crew sizes around 55, nuclear submarines today hold around 155 people. So in my quest to learn more about submarines, I sought out an actual submariner to give me the insider scoop. You actually kind of have two different roles uh, on a submarine. So there's a watch standing role and then uh, your essentially day-to-day -day task or your leadership role. A lot of stress, a lot of lack of sleep because uh, you would do your six hour watch and then you would have your six hours worth of work and then you would get six hours of sleep and repeat that. And the way you kind of combat that is working out well. Uh, there's no gym on a submarine. There's very small areas. Uh, so people would, you actually find like little nooks and crannies to put like a stationary bike or a treadmill, um, a pull-up bar, ways that sailors would do something to decompress. I think if you're gonna start off in uh, being a submarine, I would make sure that you are you know, good with your foundational math and science, because uh, you use those, especially as a submarine officer on a, on a daily basis. But I would also say uh, be flexible, because uh, you know, even though you know, we think military are very strict, very rigid, um, one of the unique things of the submarine force is when you're out and you're deployed, you don't always have the answers. Uh, so you have to work as a team to kind of come up with the solution. Yeah, making sure you have that open mind because you think of military being very structured and always having a process. But coming up with solutions to different problems is always important, regardless of uh, what field you're in. Just because a person can physically withstand life on a submarine doesn't mean they are mentally sound enough to. To learn more about the limitations of the mind and how mentally strong a submariner needs to be, I spoke to a psychologist for some answers. All submariners do have to go through a, a screening, a psychological screening, and based on the results of that screening, we'll determine whether they can accept sub duty or not, or be assigned to submarine duty. The crews are very small on board the subs. There are no mental health providers deployed with a sub, but really what we're looking for is a sense of that resiliency, the ability to bounce back when one experiences stressors. And to develop resiliency, there's it's really a whole package that you know, people have to uh, lead a good physical life. They have to be nutritionally sound. Um, they have to be able to effectively cope with stressors. It's important to for such individuals to develop routine throughout their throughout their day. They work long hours, but it's important for them to ensure that they're uh, engaging in the things that help them regenerate, if you will whether it's reading or studying or gaming or interacting with the other members on the, the boat, um, there is, it's important to look at the sense of community on the boat itself too because these are the individuals that you're spending 
all of your time with. They, they liken military commands to family. You know, they're spending so much time with these individuals that you can't help but have that sense of connection with them or hopefully have that sense of connection with them. With all this newfound information, the only thing left is to test it myself. While I can't just spend time on a nuclear submarine without any training, I can spend a night on the USS Cobia, which is docked at the Wisconsin Maritime Museum in Manitowoc. I planned with a group of friends, we packed the car, and made our way up. As I sat in the dark, I started to really think about this way of living. When you're down there, time has no meaning, making our tour seem shorter than it really was. The thought of living like that every day seems unsettling. Later that night, I stared at the bed above me wondering what it would be like to have the whole room full of sleeping people. Could I live like that for months at a time? In all honesty, I'm not sure I could. I like my space, and I like my alone time a little too much. With just one night, I got a broken four hours of cold sleep that I don't think I could make into a lifestyle. When I woke up the next morning, I could hear the seagulls above us. Crawling out of bed and having the ability to go out and see the sunrise and feel the fresh air was enough for me to realize that this life isn't for me. But I do have a newfound respect for the sailors that do and have served on a submarine. And while I'm still drawn to it and still find it deeply intriguing, I've realized I belong above the surface. <laughs> 